Hey, hey, TDA, and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is my bite-sized run, which is aimed at those of you who want to progress through this game without every build taking weeks to complete, but still have an awesome-looking factory. And I would say so far we are succeeding because this starting facility, I think, looks pretty damn good. Excuse my language. Um, speaking of being efficient, this facility is aimed at plugging away at our smart plating, and I think we should have a couple of those by now. Let's check it out. Yep, only five, but we've uh, just completed this. This is starting right after we completed the last episode. Um, so this will take a little bit of time to get those smart platings done. So let's make sure we make the most out of that time and construct a couple of things that we have kind of been neglecting so far, but that we definitely will need moving forward. Now, in terms of unlocking stuff for this episode, you don't actually need to unlock anything new, but I would recommend that you work towards unlocking Logistics Mark II, the Research Sync Bonus Program, as well as the Field Research. All of that will just come in handy. You don't necessarily need to unlock the Jump Pads. They are quite expensive because you need 50 rotors for that. But there's no immediate use for these things. And 50 rotors at this point will take us quite a while to produce, unless you handcraft them. And... I would recommend just spending your attention elsewhere. But you do want to have the field research unlocked, even if it's just to have the map, so it's a little bit easier to follow along what I'm doing. Now, pretty close by where we started, there is actually a normal limestone node. So it's uh, here on the map. It's pretty close to where we started at, like I said, it's slightly to the north. And it's very e easy to find, because once you start moving to the north, you'll find this little dude over here. Uh, making all kinds of gas clouds. You do not want to fight with this one. You just stay away from it and you should be fine. It doesn't actually move, so no harm there. Make sure you pick up all these, uh, well not all of them, but at least some of those uh, leaves and wood things that are lying around. You might as well while you're moving up and down between your bases. And there's probably going to be some other hostiles here as well that you want to take out. Those shouldn't be too much of an issue as long as you stay away from that one. Now there's also this uh, sphere over here that will keep spamming you with Your contract legally compels you to harvest this artifact. Those types of messages. And that gets really annoying really fast. So just pick it up. They don't actually have a function in the game just yet. They are uh, intended for the story whenever we get that. Um, but yeah, so make sure you start building at this node. And there is some silver here as well. There's some quartz here. So that's actually very useful to unlock some progress in a few episodes. Maybe next episode actually. We'll have to see. But for now, we want to set up a very basic concrete facility over here. Oh look, we found a little friend. And this time around I can actually tame him because I have berries on me. And we're not in the beta branch anymore. So this should work. Just make sure you're not running. Get its attention. Hello. 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 There we go. It will start backing off. Just throw the berries on the ground. Wait for it to come and pick it up. Wait for it to actually eat it. And pat it on the back. And there we go. Now we have a happy panda. And it will follow you around. And every now and then you can check if it brought you anything. Um, doesn't usually bring you anything good. But it can actually bring you some rare items. So yeah, there's no harm in having a little doggy following you around. Anyway, let's get back to building because the reason I actually went in here is because I forgot to bring some uh, portable miners in order to actually build miners. Now you don't need to get all fancy and complicated with this, just put down a miner. This miner on the normal node will produce twice as much as the other one we have closer to our base. Uh, that means we're also going to need two constructors. Uh, actually, we need only about one and a half or one and one third constructor. But since we can't currently um, under scale this uh, production we'll just have to deal with it so this the second constructor will only be working about one third of the time now in the back of course we're feeding this into a couple of mergers into a storage unit and now we have another little production facility for concrete there's no such thing as having too much concrete in this game trust me so um yeah we definitely need this second facility and the reason we're getting it up and running now is this will start filling while we do some other stuff now you are going to have to drag your power cables all the way over here um and i do recommend just tying everything to a single power grid because that just makes it very easy to make sure you can enable it from wherever you are on the map all right 
So at this point you will probably have to expand your power pursuit at least a little bit. The first few biofuel burners that we started out will uh, probably be running out by now. Or at least they'll not necessarily be running out, but you will also be running low on total power. So you'll need to add a few more biofuel burners just to make sure everything keeps working. And actually this one just turned off as well, so you will need to every now and then come back and restock them. Just make sure that you use a solid biofuel in order to do that because it will keep burning way, way, way longer than the other alternative fuels that you have access to at this point. But anyway, let's start building the final build of this episode. Okay, so remember this little facility where we have like a single smelter and a single constructor making wires and we actually had an unconnected cable production facility we definitely do want to start making cables automated now and we are also going to need these copper sheets we both need a lot of them so i think just a single constructor making them will be just fine but we do want to make sure we have all our basics automated because as you can see this is everything we have unlocked so far we actually have automated everything except for copper sheets so let's make sure we do that and since I think by now you get the gist of how you build this simple facility, I'll just skip to the end product. Which brings us to this nice little night tight block of production. And I think this looks pretty good, even though it's very basic. But yeah, uh, like I said, we want our bases to look good. And I think this does the trick. So in order to get that going, I actually flipped around the miner over here. Uh, the only reason I did that because I wanted to keep it kind of square and this did the trick. It, there's actually a secondary benefit to that because this allows me easy access to this vein in case we want at a later point to double up on the production for example then it's very easy to kind of extract additional ore from this line as it is right now. Um, on top of that we have the two smelters on the at bottom left over there and we have four constructors so three of these constructors are actually making wires and the one in the back all the way in the back is making the copper sheets now the reason i do that is because this will actually not be functioning at full speed it will actually only be producing copper sheets at 75 percent speed and because it's not going to be operating at full speed and we don't actually have access to um, under tuning right now or making sure the production facility actually only operates at 75 percent I just put it at the end of the line so that all the ingots go into the wire production first and then the last one is taking up everything that is left and I do want these wire production constructors to be operating at full speed so as long as soon as they start um, basically draining all the ingots they can from the system then the remaining ones should be going to the last one and that means it's going to be operating at effectively 75% speed. Now there's of course a cable production unit in here as well and two of the wire constructors are feeding into that so this is going to be operating at optimal speed. This is going to give us 30 cables per minute which is quite a lot actually. It's probably more than we need but we have the production here anyway and there's no reason to produce less than that. We are only tapping into a single note so it's not like we're overdoing anything right there. We're also still going to need some wires, so we have one constructor just making wires and feeding into a um, nice little storage unit. And then of course in the, uh, all the way in the back we have our copper sheets storage unit. So everything copper related now done, everything iron related also done all the way here in the back. And we have now two facilities making concrete, the first one we made over here and the other one in the back. Now, why did we do all of this, even though it was kind of boring, I suppose? I mean, we were just kind of expanding on the production that we already had. Well, there is a very good reason for that, and let me show you. So there's actually two reasons. First of all, the next objective, as we have been seeing on the top right of our screen for quite a while now, is build the space elevator. In order to build that space elevator, we are going to need quite a bit of resources. We are going to need 500 concrete, 250 plates, 400 rods, and 1500 wire. So like I said, we still need some wire. Um, we should have all of that now. I actually didn't go around collecting it, but there's definitely more than this in our stockpiles. But more importantly, once we build this space elevator, the first thing we're going to have to do is unlock the first, um, the first, first phase of the space elevator. We're going to need 50 smart plating for that and i couldn't have timed this any better apparently uh we just made our 50th smart plating we already had a few in inventory so it's not quite as exact but this will take you about 45 minutes to an hour to make these and you cannot make these by hand so you do need to automate that we're only making about one per minute with our build 
But we're going to need some of these other resources anyway. We're going to need to upgrade our builds like the copper build we just did. And we might as well just take, make use of that time and make the smart plating in the meanwhile. In my first run, I definitely overbuilt the amount of smart plating we need because you don't actually need that much smart plating after you unlock the first stage of the elevator. Um, especially since everything else you're going to be building after that, this is still going to be producing that one smart plating per second. Uh, not per second, per minute. Um, so by the time you're done with that, you're going to have more smart plating than you know what to do with. So just make sure you, you build the things that you're going to need later on. And just build them at a decently s slow pace that's not hard on your power. Uh, it doesn't take forever to actually set it up. But just have it running in the background while you upgrade the stuff you're going to do anyway. Just makes your gameplay so much more efficient. So I can't stress this enough. Um, if you want to be efficient about your time, this is the way to do it. All of the builds that we've done today should take you about 45 minutes to an hour. And gets you some real progress and gets you ready for the next phase. Which will be in the next episode of course. So make sure you join me for that. If you haven't done so, please like and subscribe the video. Uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you in the next one.